All right, before we continue with the uh, kind of bending, bending metal, I'm just going to do the same thing that we did here, okay, this union uh, on this side as well, just in case we've got overlapping parts here. This will take a bit of time, so just give that a moment to process through. There we go, so that's all done. Um, right, so I'm coming down here now. Um, so yeah, so all of these are, are going to bend, right? So eventually I'm going to fracture them up uh, really small. Well, not really small, but into pieces which uh, will be able to make it look like it's bending. But before that, I want to fracture it into pieces that can actually come apart, right? So we don't want, um, you know, if we imagine that's the kind of width of our bridge, the length of the bridge, sorry. You know, when it's coming down, we don't want just all of this metal to bend you know, into long strips. We want separate pieces. And I don't want them all to be in the same place. You know, I don't want a cut here and a cut here to have those straight lines. So what what I want to do is take um, a, a num few of these pieces, fracture them with a just a Voronoi fracture, take a few more. And that will just give me some kind of overlap in my in the pieces, right? It will make more sense as we as we do this. So I'm going to drop a, uh, not a switch, sorry, a, uh, a split. First of all, connect that up there. Okay, I'm going to do just another connectivity thing here. We need to do them again because we're kind of changing geometry up here, right? Um, so another connectivity there. Um, set this to, I prefer to do it on primitive, right? And then I'm going to grab so that class attributes, make sure we're on primitives there. You can see I'm going to grab this kind of big chunk at the bottom here. Okay, press enter on that. Okay, wait, let me just visualize the class. There we go. So that's one big piece. Um, that's all connected now. That's one piece, right? Um, so that's fine over there. So now with the rest of these, I'm just going to drop a wrangle here. And I kind of want to randomly grab, I want to grab, you know, a few of them um, to fracture them in one way and a few of them to fracture in another way. So to do that, we need some random value. So to generate that, uh, I'm going to use the uh, rand function. So and we'll generate a um, a an attribute called rand. So it's a func it's a float called rand. We're doing it not on the points on the primitives, um, and we're going to use the rand function and use that class attribute that we just generated. Class as our variable, okay, as our argument. Sorry for the function. Um, so that will generate a zero to one. A value based uh, randomly based on the class. So each we're visualizing the class now. So this purple piece will have a different zero to one value to this orange one to this one. Well, not necessarily different, but um, randomly between zero and one. And we can see that here. See they go from zero to one. Okay, and we can use that to separate them. So we use a split. And then say at rand is more than, and then this is basically like a percentage now. If I put more than uh, 0 0.5, that means basically randomly give me half of the pieces on this side and randomly and give me a random selection of half of them on this side, right? It's not like a line down the middle, it's just half here and half there. And then I can do it, you know, this would be like. 10% more or less is not going to be exact. 10% goes to this side and um, 90, sorry, the other way around. Yeah, 10% to this side, 90% to this side. Okay, I'm going to do it just to 0.5. Okay, then it will make sense why I'm doing all this in a moment. Um, now we're going to fracture all these, just a standard Voronoi fracture. Okay. Um, and they're going to be called, and they're all going to have their own names because it, you know it's important. Whenever we're fracturing things in different lines and then bring them together, you need to make sure your name 
attributes is different. That's why this one is road, because I'm not going to call anything else road. I'm going to call this chunk A, because it's, it's a bit like making chunks. I'm going to do three of them, so one here, one here, and one here. So chunk A, chunk B, here, and then for this one, chunk C. Okay, and then, uh, yeah, we'll need to scatter points. We can just do it on the surface for this because they're not, it's not very thick geometry, okay? Um, but I don't want a lot of points, right? Um, I'm gonna do just 30 for this one. You can turn on the point visualization if that helps. Okay, um, and then maybe change the global seed per scatter here. So I'll set this one to one. Um, do another one here for these, and then uh, maybe for this I'll do less points since we've got less pieces there. Uh, sorry, less geometry, and then change the seed as well to two, and then another one here. Keep this with 20 points and set this one to uh, three. Okay, just so they're all different in different places. Now we can connect them up. Oops. Okay, and they should all fracture pretty quickly. So we've got chunk C. I'm just double checking here. We've got chunk C, chunk B, chunk A, and I'm going to merge all these together. And we'll take a look at them together and take a look at the name attributes as well. So that can hopefully uh, oh, that rand attribute. We can delete that uh, attribute. Deletes. Um, do it here. Maybe we'll merge these together first. This is not really essential, but I'm going to do it anyway. Delete that rand attribute because we're not using it anymore. Where did I do it? On the primitives, rand, perfect, okay. Uh, do we want to delete anything else? Area, we could use that again, so I'll leave it. Everything else we're going to keep. Okay, so now we're, yeah, we're looking at the name attributes. So you can see we've kind of got some pieces, you know, th these lines aren't lining up. If I was just to do this all in one, you know, just one scatter, and um, on one Voronoi fracture, then these would all line up perfectly, but they're not. So they're kind of overlapping. So I'm basically thinking about when the when the bridge is collapsing, we don't just have chunks falling. We've got um, not only clusters. We've got clusters falling, but there's going to be you know long bendy bits of metal getting caught between those clusters as well. I want some overlap, basically. You know, is what I'm looking for. Okay, so you can see these are all kind of, um, there are some bits which stay together. There's a big green piece here, but then there's other pieces crossing over them. So I, it's just to, trying to get something a bit more interesting, uh, basically. Um, so this point is important because this will be our render geometry, right? So I'm going to group this, call this, we kind of did it up here, I think, bendy metal, but you know, because we've got a new geometry now, because we've just cut it. So I'm going to do it again and just call it uh, bendy. Just bendy. It's fine there. Okay, and let's do a new connectivity sort because we've changed it again. Don't know if we'll need this right now. We might do it in a bit. Okay, that's fine. And then I'm going to save it. Oops. Cool. Um, oh, not a file. File cache is what I want. File cache. Okay. Save current frame. That's fine. And let's call. Leave it in the hip for um, location. Call it bendy. .geo.se is fine actually, we'll leave that. Save to disk and load from disk, 
great. Okay, so this is will be our render geometry, but what we'll do is I see a mistake there. I think I meant to delete that. Yeah. One second. Yeah, you see I've deleted this side, but not this side. So let me just come here, grab this. There we go. That should just filter through again now. These fractures don't take any time, really. Great. And just save that. Okay, perfect. Um, and then, yeah, this side, we don't really need to do anything because they're, you know, they're rigid pieces. They'll just join into the stream a bit um, later on.